Isn't pregnancy freaking weird? Wait, no. <sighs> Don't worry, people, it's hot chocolate. Hot chalk. Hot chalk. I know some people say it's okay to like drink one cup of coffee or something like a day, but I literally haven't been able to. Mm -mm. Baby says no. Hey everyone, welcome to Anaya's Notebook where I write down all my thoughts and feelings and share them with you guys. So I'm currently 35 weeks pregnant. This video is going to be all about pregnancy and I just want to share a few things that I've learned, a few things that I wish I knew, and things that nobody really talks about. So we're going to be talking about the first trimester, nesting, in-laws and boundary setting, and how healing yourself equals healing your baby. It's gonna be less medical things. So if you're looking for a practical step-by-step -step guide on pregnancy, then this is probably not the video for you. But if you're interested in listening to the deep psychological, spiritual thoughts around pregnancy, then stick around. And what better place to start than the first trimester, the magical first trimester, the not so magical first trimester. The first trimester is literally no freaking joke, people. It's intense. I feel like before I got pregnant, I kind of idealized pregnancy. I don't know if that's a natural human instinct or a primitive instinct that humans have so that we want to reproduce, or if it's because of the images and videos that we see on social media and how that's portrayed to us but all i know is that i had a completely different idea in my head about what it would be like to be pregnant so when i became pregnant and i started going through the first trimester i literally died also i just want to make this clear i'm not trying to scare anybody if you're not already pregnant or if you haven't already go gone through this or if you are currently in this phase. I just want to be as transparent as possible in my life and on this channel. So that's what really happened to me. That's the truth. You can't hide the truth. You know what's crazy about that too is just like how women are expected to work during that time frame. You're expected to be normal. Hold it all together. Go to work, drive, when your stomach is literally betraying you. So yeah, the number one thing that I learned about pregnancy and that I wish I would have known before getting pregnant is just to mentally prepare for the potential for that intensity because it really does change your everyday routine. For me, I'm a really picky eater and I'm a habit type of eater. So I'll eat certain foods for a period of time and then get bored and then move on. So I really tried to fight myself. I really tried to fight myself and like eat the same foods I was eating before and it just did not work. I don't recommend doing that, but what I do recommend doing is being open to change and I think that's what this phase of pregnancy really taught me is that I need to be a little bit more flexible. What really helped me too was keeping little snacks on hand like crackers. It was summer during the time I was in my first trimester. Water pops were my best friend. Little juices were really good. So just trying to keep your stomach moving, keep it satisfied. I also learned to go as bland and as safe as possible. I was eating cream of wheat and sourdough toast for breakfast and mashed potatoes and corn for dinner. My advice would be to go as bland as possible, foods that you know are safe, foods that are consistent, and also know that it's okay to cry because I cried a lot. It's okay to like let those emotions out. Just reach out to your support system, your family members, your friends, like let them know what you're going through because it is really a, a really difficult adjustment process and just know and pray that it's temporary and you're gonna make it through it. So if you've already been through this phase of pregnancy, then high five, high five sister. And if you haven't, then You've got this. Don't be afraid, but it is really hard. On to number two. Let's talk about nesting. I seriously had 
no idea. I have no idea what it was. I didn't find out what nesting was until I was already mid-nest. I was nesting hardcore. So if you don't already know what nesting is, it is the natural instinct or urge to prepare your home for your baby. I think someone brought it up. I think it was a family member or a friend or I saw a TikTok or a video or something, but I had already made the spontaneous decisions to remodel my downstairs bathroom, paint my office, I bought all new furniture, and I redid the entire backyard. Oh, and we built a, I think nine by nine cat enclosure, as well as a dog run. I didn't really do that part, but it was on my list. It was on the nesting list. Personally, I'm already inherently an extremist a little sometimes in the sense that like when i get a certain idea about how i want something to feel or look i will not rest until it's done but i feel like being pregnant definitely enhanced that tendency in myself tenfold i feel so bad for logan sometimes he really has to deal with all that love you it can manifest itself as deep cleaning, reorganizing the spice cabinet, clearing out all of your closets, or remodeling the backyard. But according to most websites, it tends to hit women more often in the last trimester. But for me, it was like my whole pregnancy. And I feel like now that I'm in the last trimester, I have this overwhelming sense of completion. Like I can just... And I don't really have, I don't feel like I have much to do besides general organization, cleaning, and regular stuff. Also online it mentions to stay sensible when the nesting instinct strikes. But I didn't even know that it was a thing. So I, I guess I wasn't that sensible. I think being aware of that instinct itself is just really helpful so that you can kind of monitor your thoughts and feel out what's really a priority and what's just like crazy brain what's crazy brain because i think a lot of my projects were crazy brain but i am glad that they got done so everything happens for a reason so i don't regret anything but i do wish that i would have just been a little bit more aware of that instinct or aware of that that could happen to you while you're pregnant but through through it all do what you feel is comfortable do what you want to do do what's in your physical boundaries most importantly, and if you're ever concerned about certain tasks, then always talk to your OB or midwife and get their advice. Alrighty, number three. Something else you don't quite think about until you're mid-pregnancy is the fact that you are now merging families with your partner's family. Yay for in-laws. I think it's important to know that pregnancy is not only something that you're personally going through or something that you're experiencing with your partner, but it's also a huge change and life experience for the family members around you. Especially if it's the first grandchild. For Logan and I, our baby will be the first grandchild on both sides, which is super exciting and fun, but it comes with a lot of attention. And this was something I really hadn't given much thought to until I actually physically witnessed both families coming together at our baby shower to celebrate our baby. And if you are blessed enough to have two families merging together like Logan and I, I think just being aware of this merging has allowed me to be more grateful for the support around me rather than being irritated or overwhelmed by the attention. And I think at first it was definitely overwhelming and it was definitely at times irritating, but some people don't have that support on both sides. So if you do, then I urge you to take a minute and just be grateful for that. But despite all that nice stuff, at the end of the day, the most important thing is that you stay true to your own values and your agreed upon values between you and your partner. You guys are the parents. You are in charge, you are in control. So now is a really good time to set and maintain healthy boundaries between your family, your new family, you, your partner, and your baby, and your parents and your in-laws. Don't be afraid to vocalize if something is making you uncomfortable or bothering you. It's okay to have boundaries and it's okay to stick by those boundaries. 
just keep communication on both sides of the family open and kind always work to resolve issues too that's i think something really important that i learned is i mean just in my life in general this is just how i operate but in specific to this too always work to resolve the issues with your family members if they're resolvable before you know resorting to like cutting people off and things like that but like i said don't be afraid to express your boundaries to other people. So before I get to the last and what I think is the most interesting and most spiritual thing that I've learned so far on my pregnancy journey, if you've gained anything from this video whatsoever, if you've learned anything new, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> pregnancy burps. <laughs> Anyways, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. I plan to make more content about my journey as a new mom, as a creative person, as a writer. I do a lot of poetry, so I plan to make some content about that and just document my journey as I become the best version of myself so that I can help or inspire others along the way. What's interesting about this last thing that I learned is it not only helps you, the pregnant lady, but it also has the potential to alter the life path of your child. When you are pregnant, you and your child's soul are essentially one unit. Or at least you guys are so close energetically that what you do directly affects your child's blueprint that they are born onto this earth with. So we are all aware of the ways in which we can physically affect our child through diet or vitamin intake or physical exercise. But what we might not be aware of is how we can affect our child emotionally and spiritually. So just like your diet can either positively or negatively affect your child, your inner work or your shadow work or lack of it can either create or remove blockages, trauma or emotional wounding from your child. Although we can't really see trauma being healed in people physically, I think there might be physical evidence for this through stem cell research. I've learned during pregnancy that your baby's stem cells get like transferred to other parts of your body and they could go into your organs. They've been found in some women's scar tissue, even in their brain and they stay there forever so if you don't believe me you can google it there's tons of articles about it online and when i learned this i was like what the that's where mother instincts come from for sure that's how your mom knows when you're not doing something that you're supposed to be doing when you're lying when you're on your way home that's how moms know when you're in trouble and you're about to like call them for help they're already calling you they already know you need help the technical term for it is fetal micro chimerism I want to put it on the screen somewhere. Fetal microchimerism. It shows us that the baby and the mother are so connected. They're so deeply connected, even on a cellular level. So why wouldn't this translate emotionally or energetically? So a little story time about how this concept kind of came into my awareness. I recently spoke with a good mentor of mine, a good friend of mine, because I was having trouble connecting with my baby and that made me feel really guilty and it made me feel like there was more that I could be doing, but also I had this feeling and this deep inner knowing that I didn't need to change myself because I was trying my best in that very moment, but still I couldn't really connect with them and that made me feel a little bit weird. So I reached out to her for guidance to see if there was anything maybe that I was missing. And she had asked me if I had experienced anything traumatic that ha happened to me from the ages of 12 to 15, like that preteen era. And I really couldn't pinpoint anything like crazy, but she assured me that it wasn't big T trauma. It was just something small, maybe something I misinterpreted as a child. And when we are children, we have a very unique and sensitive way in which we process the world. So it could have been something as small as like, I didn't get the toy that I wanted at the grocery store or I was like denied something and I took it the wrong way or I got in trouble for something small. But whatever it was, it was an unhealed wound that affected 
my self-concept and if I left it untreated or unhealed that it would then move on to my baby and I thought that was really interesting and so with, along with the stem cells the identity crisis which I'm about to get into that I was having my entire pregnancy and this it just all made sense to me and that's where I think that generational wounding and trauma comes from is from us not actively working to heal those aspects in ourselves, because if we heal them in ourselves we heal them in our children so now on to the day I lost my identity or changed my identity or decided to become me like my full self the whole beginning part of my pregnancy I was having an identity crisis I was having a creator's crisis and I think that part of this was because I was becoming a mom I didn't want my identity to revolve around just being a mom and I feel like I hadn't really accomplished things that I really wanted to accomplish whether that be with writing or with any of my creative pursuits because I've always been deeply deeply afraid of sharing my work with other people and the world. So to make a long story short, I had to learn how to unprogram myself from the beliefs of other people because what I discovered is that all of us to some extent embody the ideas, opinions, and beliefs of other people whether we're conscious of it or not and we adopt those beliefs as our own. We integrate them into our identity so much so that they cloud our truest form, our highest self. But my point in expressing this whole story is the fact that before I even knew that unhealed trauma could like leak onto your baby in utero, I was allowing myself to feel all of the emotions that I was feeling. I really listened to my intuition and my inner guidance to let this process unfold. I can make a whole video on this separately if you guys are interested and if you are just let me know. But yeah, so I really let myself be guided by my emotions. Now I realize it wasn't just for me. It was for my baby too. Like maybe my baby really needed me to heal that in order for them to thrive in this lifetime. Maybe they came at this particular time in my life to help me heal it. Like we were helping each other become the best versions of ourselves. That's crazy. My advice to you if you're pregnant would be to really like take a look at, you know, habits that you don't really like having anymore or if you feel like you need to make adjustments or pattern changes do it because it can not only help you it'll help your child too well we've reached the end of the video my friends and if you've watched the video all the way till the end i want to thank you for sticking around and hanging out with me here on my little corner of the internet i hope that you got something out of this video and if you did consider subscribing to my channel like i said i do plan to make more content about my journey as a new mom things that i'm learning um writing content whatever i'm not sure yet i'm just gonna let it flow but if you got anything positive out of this video or learned anything new leave a comment and let me know what you learned until next time hi girls